Hello, welcome to Michelle Loses It. I'm Michelle. On this channel, I am taking you along with me as I follow the Calibrate Weight Loss Program. Um, I started at my beginning and I'm taking you through week by week as I progress. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please stay tuned. All right, so to recap my current goals, um, I am drinking 120 ounces of water a day. I probably did that 95% of the last week. Um, yesterday I didn't, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, I am still doing a daily weigh-in. I am still tracking my energy levels. The one thing about tracking energy levels is, for me, they change throughout the day. I've been tracking mine when I wake up in the morning um, to kind of get a sense of, I'm using it to kind of get a sense of how I felt when I woke up. Um, which helps me assess whether I had a good night's sleep or not. But sometimes I might not have a great energy level in the morning, but by the afternoon, I'm feeling pretty good. So they don't give you options in the app to track um, different levels during the day. So um, I am sticking with the morning. Um, I, it's probably something I should ask my coach about um, the next time I meet with her, which is next week. So I'll give you a follow up on that one. I'm still tracking my red foods in the app, and then I'm still turning my phone off by 9.15 and getting in bed by 10. I'm about, I'm still about 50-50 on that. Um, there are some nights where I'm just, I'm staying up. Um, so, but usually I'm in bed by 10, and I am able to get a full night's sleep even with, with even when I don't turn my phone off on time. So I don't really have trouble falling asleep, which the whole point of turning all your electronics off 45 minutes before your bedtime is so that you can kind of um, eliminate any of the blue light effects that are still hanging around. I don't find that that's a problem for me. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't still be doing this, but for me personally, I don't have trouble falling asleep, so I don't think that's a big deal. If you have trouble falling asleep, then you might wanna consider sticking to some kind of a routine where you're turning off your electronics 30 to 45 minutes before your bedtime. Um, all right, so those are my goals. I'm on track pretty much with all of them. Um, they're, not every day is perfect, you know? And I never went into this thinking that every day was gonna be perfect. I went into this knowing that they weren't going to be and accepting that, which was a big change for me because in the past, like I said before, I've been an all or nothing kind of a person. So the fact that I had the mindset coming into this that I plan to have more good days than bad, I plan to take every single day one at a time and just get through that day and then start again the next day. And that seems to be working for me pretty well. I feel like a lot of these habits are taking hold and um, so I feel pretty good about it. As of Friday this week, um, I officially switched from the jumpstart triangle to the weight loss triangle. As I've mentioned before, I'm not gonna tell you what foods are on which color group because this is a paid program and I don't feel like that would be fair to the people who are paying. So I'll put a graphic up here somewhere to show you what the triangle looks like sans food. Um, but basically it starts at the top and those are green foods. Those are foods that I can have throughout the day, every day, at every meal. Then you go into yellow green foods and those, as you progress down the triangle, the foods become uh, less nurturing for your body. It doesn't mean that they're not nurturing, they're just less nurturing than the tier before. So the yellow green foods I can have up to two times a day and then you're, you drop into the yellow foods which you can have one serving a day. And then you go into orange foods which you can have two servings per week and then you go into red foods and the goal there is to have as few of those per week as possible. Um, so the foods that, um, so the difference between the jumpstart triangle and the weight loss triangle are which foods are in which color. So the jumpstart um, triangle is the strictest of all the triangles. So there's an intro triangle that's kind of getting you used to how to follow the colors and look at the foods. And then there's the jumpstart challenge that's two weeks long. And then I'm in the weight loss triangle right now. And then eventually I'll move into maintenance. That's far away. So right now I'm in maintenance. And what happens is some of the foods that were in the red food category are now in one of the other color groups. 
Um, so it's a little bit less strict and they aren't, they haven't necessarily moved back up as far as they were when they were in the intro. So the weight loss triangle is a little stricter than the intro, but not as strict as the jump start. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, I have started following that as of Friday. I also took my third shot of Wagovi on Wednesday, and I'm very happy to report that I haven't had any side effects this week. So the first two weeks I experienced a little bit of nausea um, for a day or two after I took the shot, and not the whole day, just like little bouts of time. This week I haven't had any issues at all. I haven't had any side effects, no nausea, nothing else. So that's a good thing. Um, I have one more shot at this dose and then I should be getting my next box of um, shots and those will go up from I'm currently on 0.25 milligrams the shot will go up to 0.5 milligrams for the next four shots um, so my cooking update so as I mentioned last week I feel like I am less prone to cravings if I have well-prepared meals sitting in my refrigerator. I don't mind cooking on the weekends. Weekdays after working a long day, I just, I don't have the energy for putting like a recipe together. And although I can cook like simple things like, you know, an air fried chicken breast and some steamed veggies, that's just not really, it, it satisfies the hunger, which is great, but it's um, when I had a whole week of that, it was kind of opening me up to having some cravings. So I feel like having the well-cooked meals that I can eat from during the week, and maybe I'll still have some of those simple meals like the air fryer chicken and some veggies. I'm, I'm okay if that's like interspersed in there. I just don't want it to be my mainstay for the week. So last week I cooked two slow cooker meals on Sunday. I get up really early. I'm an early bird. I'm up by seven. Today I wanted to sleep in and I was at I was up by seven. It's just my body clock now that I'm an old lady. But um, so I got up early on Sunday and I started one of my slow cooker meals. So I had gone through on Saturday. I went through cookbooks. I went through websites and I found a handful of recipes that looked like they fit within my food triangle and that they looked interesting. I want to try, I want to keep trying new recipes because I want to find things that satisfy my taste buds, but still fit within my program. Because if I have to eat boring food, then I'm going to slide right back to the way that I was before. And I don't want to do that. So, um, I cooked two slow cooker meals. One was a hit, one not so much. So I'll talk about that one first. It was a peach basil slow cooker chicken. And um, I'm not usually a huge fan of fruit in my entrees. Maybe in a salad it's okay. Sometimes fruit, you know, with chicken and some nuts and things like that is a tasty salad. But in my food, I'm not always a fan. But I thought peach and the basil maybe makes it a little more savory. It has balsamic vinegar in it, and I love the tartness of a balsamic vinegar. So I was like, let me give this a try. That one I didn't end up loving. I ate it for dinner Sunday night. I served it over quinoa, and then I ate it one more time. I had a, I mean, the batch that it made was humongous. So I ate it one more time for leftovers, I think maybe for lunch the next day, and I just wasn't into it. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't bad, it wasn't inedible but it just didn't do it for me. I think I didn't care for the sweetness of the peaches mixed in with the balsamic and all that. And it was just kind of, I don't know, it didn't do it for me. If you like peaches and chicken, maybe give it a try. I, I don't wanna say that this was a bad recipe. It just didn't suit my tastes. If you would like a link to that recipe, then let me know in the comments and I will give it to you, but I'm not going to post it because it's not one that I'm necessarily recommending. The second recipe that I tried was definitely a win, and it was a butter chicken um, recipe. The butter chicken was also cooked in the slow cooker, and it's from a blog called One Lovely Life, and it was really tasty. Um, it's got, you know, chicken, obviously, um, onion, coconut oil, garlic, ginger, coriander, cumin, cardamom, salt, cayenne pepper, coconut milk, tomato paste. 
Um, I really enjoyed that. I served that also over um, quinoa. And then I ate, um, the thing I love about these online recipes these days, at least the ones that I've found so far, when you click to print it, you have the option of changing the number of servings and then all the ingredients automatically recalculate for you, which I think is fabulous because some of these recipes were like, you know, for servings of like eight people and I clearly don't need that much. So I tend to default to servings of four and that gives me enough leftovers to eat during the week. So this recipe I did, um, it was four to six serving. Um, so for this recipe, it does have you make the sauce in a saucepan before you add it to the slow cooker. And I believe that I did that. I don't always, even when the recipe calls for it, and I'll get to that in, in a minute when I talk about the recipe I'm making today. Um, it just depends on how much time I have, how much energy I have. Um, a lot of times, even when the recipe calls for you to do some pre-cooking before you put it in the slow cooker, it comes out just fine without doing all that extra work. I, I'm pretty sure for the butter chicken that I did the prep work though. They have you make the sauce in a saute pan um, with the onions and the garlic and the ginger and the spices and you make the sauce up and then you just pour it over the chicken in the slow cooker and then cook it. I served it over quinoa a couple of times and then I served it over a um, air fryer uh, sweet potato. So I like to just take my sweet potato, clean it really good. I scrub it with a, a brush and poke holes in it and throw it in the air fryer um, at 400 for like 35 minutes and it comes out really nice and perfect and I just split it down the middle and serve stuff on top of it. So this was great on top of a sweet potato. Um, I try to limit my sweet potatoes to twice a week um, rather than having them more often. Um, so I didn't do that. I only did that once instead of multiple times and I served it over quinoa the other times. So that one was really tasty. I will link that in the description box below because it was a good one. Um, so yesterday I had plans with friends and we went thrifting and I, I knew that this day was coming. I had it planned and I allowed for it in my program. I knew that the day wasn't going to be perfect. I knew we'd be eating out for lunch. I thought that my friend might cook dinner or we would order out because it was an all day event and we had a freaking blast. Um, and so I just kind of, I allowed for it, but I also, um, had plans in advance that I knew I wasn't going to go crazy. So I didn't know where we were going to be eating. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to have a salad because it's not my favorite meal and I wanted to enjoy myself for the day. So we actually, for lunch, we ended up at Culver's, which is a local, um, kind of like, it's not a fast food restaurant, but you do order at the counter and then they bring it to your table. But it's like, American food. It's cheeseburgers and fries and, you know, different American kind of meals. And I love a cheeseburger and their cheeseburgers are amazing. So I allowed myself to have the cheeseburger. Um, and I had a couple of fries. I barely touched the fries and I only ate half of the burger. So I allowed myself, I keep saying I allowed myself, but that's really what it is. I allowed myself to enjoy the burger and I stopped when my hunger was satisfied, not my appetite, if that makes sense to you. And half of the burger was enough to satisfy my hunger. So I had half the burger, maybe three or four, five fries at the most, um, and, and called it a day. So I got to enjoy my cheeseburger, which is one of my favorite foods of all time. So um, I, was proud of myself because that's a dang good burger and I stopped myself at half. So that's how I'm kind of getting, uh, that's kind of how I'm starting to adapt um, and uh, still allowing myself to have some of my favorite foods and not having to make them substituted with things that aren't my favorite. So like, I don't want to have if, if I'm gonna have like a black bean burger, then I'm having a black bean burger because I want the black bean burger, not because it's a substitute for a cheeseburger. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but, um, and I do enjoy a good black bean burger, believe it or not, but um, that is not a substitute for a really juicy cheeseburger. So 
Um, sorry if I'm saying cheeseburger too much. <laughs> anyway, so then we had my friend cooked an amazing dinner. She made this uh, cold roast beef salad pizza. It was the most interesting thing. It had like a horseradish, horseradish mayo sauce with um, lettuce and tomatoes and sliced roast beef mixed up with Italian dressing served on top of a cooked pizza crust. And it was really tasty. It's not something that I will make um, again because of the pizza crust, um, but it was interesting. I limited myself to one piece and I enjoyed it. And that's all I ate all day was half a cheeseburger, a couple of fries, and then that one slice of salad pizza. I mean, the salad was piled high. So it was mostly good stuff. The crust is not the most friendly for my program, but I didn't go crazy. So I was pretty happy with how the day turned out. Um, so that's kind of where my week stood. Um, today I am cooking again for the week. I have three meals planned. I'm not going to get all of them cooked today, but I am going to get two of them cooked. And then the third one is so easy that I'll just throw it together tomorrow before I start work so that it's ready by the end of the day. The first one is called, and I, I, hope I'm pronouncing this right. I did a Google search for how to pronounce it, but it's called mafe or mafe. It's an African peanut stew. And I cooked this like I did again. I got up at 7 a.m. I threw everything in and started cooking at 8 30. So it was ready by early afternoon because I put it on really slow cooking because it has stew meat in it and I wanted that stew meat to really fall apart. So I cooked it for six hours and so I had it for a late lunch early dinner and I served it over brown rice and it was delicious. It had the sauce has like uh, tomato sauce and peanut butter and um, a bunch of spices and you mix that all up in a food processor and you pour that over sweet potatoes, onions, carrots, and then you throw the stew meat in. And you also are supposed to put two and a half cups of broth in. I didn't have the right kind of broth because I don't cook with beef very often. So the only broth I had was chicken broth and I thought that might be weird. So I just used water. I figured it just needed a liquid. It probably would have tasted better with the beef broth, but it was still pretty tasty. So that recipe is definitely a win. I will also link that one below. Um, and then the other two that I'm, um, that I'm about to, well, the one that I'm about to start is a slow cooker pork loin. Um, and then the third one that I'm going to do, and that one's tomorrow, is the super easy one. I've talked about this one before, and it's the slow cooker salsa chicken. It's super easy and super tasty and really easy to mix and match with a bunch of other things, whether it's on a sweet potato or on a salad. It would be great on tacos if you, I don't, I'm not eating tortillas right now, so I won't do that, but it would be great on some kind of a wrap. I don't know, maybe I'll try a low carb wrap. I don't know if that's even part of the program. I'll have to do some research on that. But um, yeah, the slow cooker salsa chicken is definitely a winner in my book. I'm thinking that might be something that I do every Sunday just so that I have that on hand to mix and match with things. So those are the things I'm cooking for my week. I've got chicken sausage in my refrigerator. I've got a bunch of vegetables. I've got Brussels sprouts and carrots and um, I, I can't even, bell peppers, onions. So I've got things to make that um, chicken sausage and veggie um, mix that I do in the air fryer. That one is also super easy and actually really tasty. So I might, you know, I don't know. It depends on how this pork loin comes out as to whether I will need to make that or not. Um, today, so now I'm at a stage in the program where I'm getting a new lesson from the app every Sunday. So um, I like that. Uh, the first several weeks, I was only getting a lesson every other week. So I like the fact that I'm getting a new lesson to help me kind of think about my eating habits and, um, and just being more mindful. And this week's lesson was on mindful eating. And the goal this week that I'm going to be adding to my list of goals is to um, start tracking well, starting a mindful eating journal. So I'm already tracking my foods in the app every day. It has you 
track what time of day you ate, whether it included any red foods, what the food was, and you take a picture of your food and you upload that with all your notes. Um, but there's a section to talk about how you were feeling, what were you doing, who were you with, and that's the mindful part of it. And they're really encouraging you not to eat at your desk if you're working, which I do all the time. Not to watch TV while you're eating, which I do all the time. They really want you to be present and pay attention to when you're preparing your food, when you're eating your food, and um, just being very mindful, being thankful for the food that you have, um, being mindful of how you're feeling when you're eating, are you enjoying it? Do you like pay attention to the flavors and just really be present. And so with that, my new goal is to start adding all of those elements into the mindful part of the tracker. So for this week, I feel like my big win was the fact that I can allow myself to go off, off program and still be in control. And I know in the past that would have been um, those two things would have been at odds with each other. Um, if I allowed myself to go off program, I would have been like, it's a free for all. I'm going to have whatever I want. I would have added ice cream to the meal or to the dinner or whatever. And I didn't do that this time. I, um, I went off program, but I stayed in control and stopped when my hunger was satisfied. So to me, that's a big win and I'm counting that one for the week. So I would love to hear what your big wins are for the week. Let me know in the comments below. And if you're here because you're also on a weight loss journey or some type of a health journey, then let's get healthy together. I will talk to you next time. Bye.